A coincidence or unintentionality. This possibly describes the general sentiments of many following the jaw-dropping revelations in the latest Ejapadia document. Well, the document, which has since gone viral, has ignited heated exchanges about its authenticity. And despite the ruling MPP's dismissal of the document as fake, recent events may suggest otherwise. But before we get into the crust of the responses to the claims, what does the document really say? And is its content in correlation with current events? Well, let's find out. In essence, the document outlines a strategic plan for the ruling MPP, including the control of Ecobank through SNIT, shareholding and board representation, placement of party members and sympathizers in key government and judiciary positions, the dominance in the electricity sector, potentially through the PDS scandal, and the implementation of the Ejapa deal. And the reasons for the alleged attempt at state capture were explained in the foreword of the document. Portions of the foreword read, quote, we, the Achim, were nobody's subjects, and yet, after 1957, were made to live in shadows of the descendants of people who never defeated us in war, while the Asante kingdom was uplifted to put us in the shade. In relatively recent times, the struggles and works of J.B. Dankwa to restore Ochiman to its original glory were thwarted, but he fought bravely to the end." Unquote. Interestingly, most events as outlined in the document have already unfolded, with similarities so striking it probably liking it to a dream come true. For instance, page 6 of the document reveals two routes through which Ecobank could be penetrated. It stated, and I quote, First is through SNIT, which has a seat on the board of Ecobank Ghana by its shareholding. The seat is occupied by the Director General of SNIT. In phase two of our agenda, Kofi Bosumpim Osafumafo, a Deputy Director General of SNIT, should be made the DJ to give him the seat on the Ecobank Ghana board. Unquote. Now, President Zanado Dankwe Kufuado on April 9, 2024, appointed Kofi Bosumpe Masafu Mafu to the role of Director General of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, after serving as deputy for seven good years. Moreover, page 31 of the document says that there was a calculated effort to position members and sympathizers of the party at strategic positions both in government and in the judiciary. It states, quote, all the appointments made to the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal and some of the high courts in Ghana under our government were to promote the MPP agenda and to ensure our country never falls in the hands of the opposition, NDC." Unquote. Oh, since the president's inception into office, he's already made over 15 appointments into the Supreme Court. The document's additional plan to favor the family members of the current president has been met with stark reactions. The president appointed his cousin. Nana Senti Bedie too, as executive secretary. Now he even has two appointments as ambassador. The president have appointed his Nana Bedie too's father, Kofi Dako Asante, as chairman on the Gimpa Council. The president appointed Mrs. Vida Asante, who is the mother of Nana Senti Bedie too, as the Ghana head of the president's household. The president appointed Kwesi Kutu Asante, the brother of Asante Bedie too again, as a board member of the hostels board. The president appointed Loretta Ochre, the sister of Nana Senti Bedie too. Kenoforata, president's cousin, was appointed finance minister. Samuel Atachia, who is the president's family, was appointed the minister of works and housing. Kwesia Mwakwata, who is the president's cousin again, was appointed minister for roads and highways. Duko Forata, who is the president's cousin, was appointed the senior presidential staffer. Gabi Asarochidako, of course, didn't get an appointment, but we know who is the prime minister of this country. And the document further highlighted the party's intention to control the electricity sector in page 3. In 2019, the Power Distribution Services PDS was contracted by government to manage the country's electricity distribution. The scandal raised allegations of fraudulent documents, lack of due diligence and the evaluation of assets and conflict of interest leading to its eventual cancellation. Moreover, the controversial Ejapa deal, which became a major bone of contention in Parliament, also found itself in the document. The alarming contents of this document have raised concern about the potential manipulation of political power and the attempts at state capture. And the first to directly address the said publication head-on was the man whose image lies on the front page of the document, Ochehene Osajifu Amwitia, 
of repenting the second himself. President Kufuado has also described it as fake. With a few months to the December 2024 elections, they are at it again. A fabricated document entitled a Japadie is being peddled around by operatives of the, info of the opposition as evidence of a grand scheme by my party to annex the state, the assets of the state. And as expected, the flag bearer of the NDC is having none of their claims. Hold this government accountable for the hardship, the crisis that they've subjected Ghana to, for the state capture that they have implemented in Ghana over the last eight years. Buying every state property, buying all the government lands, amassing wealth to themselves. Recently, there was an issue about a document called Ejapadia. They said it's fabricated. But even if it's fabricated, the implementation is not fabricated. Some analysts have asked President Gufado and persons mentioned in the Ejapadia document to seek legal redress if indeed the content of the document is fake. In fact, I dare say that the president is deliberately waging a war on Ghana. Certainly. You dare say. I dare say that. You dare say. He's waging a war on Ghana. And it becomes our obligation, the obligation of every single Ghanaian to rise up and defend Ghana. I said the picture of them is on the document. They should have taken it to court to disassociate themselves from it. The president is a lawyer. They have taken it to court to disassociate themselves. Have they done it? They haven't. So we take it. Now what is in this document is what they believe in. Some may dismiss the Jabadia document as a fabrication and others may see it as a blueprint for political manipulation. But despite the varying perspectives, one thing is clear, that the document has exposed deep-seated concerns about governance, power and accountability in Ghana.